All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Geek Garage podcast. I'm your host, David. With me, as usual, is my co-host, Ted White. How are you doing? Good, sir. Uh, David, they announced a new Hitman game and a new Resident Evil game on the same day. This is basically the closest to happy I've ever been. You know what? I I, I understand that feeling. It's uh, it's a good one. I enjoy it. Man, it it is not bad. Let me let me tell you. Uh, yeah, we we're we're gonna get into that. We we got to get through our pre roll first. But yeah, we're gonna get into the. <laughs> The greatness that was unloaded onto us citizens of the world. Yes, us regular right. people. Right. Us us low lives, the ones that that just play the games, not the geniuses that make them. All right, Ted. Well, before we get into it, you want to uh take up the uh the pre-roll for us? Sure. Uh this is the last time we will go over this, I promise. <laughs> uh but everything's canceled. Stay in your homes forever. <laughs> uh at least until it's safe. So, uh, as Dave and I have said several times on the podcast before, and we'll continue to say in the future as well, hopefully, you know, we really enjoy going out to the different conventions and, and meeting people and, you know, seeing everybody's great cosplays. Unfortunately, with the virus, all of the conventions that we had planned to attend, at least in the first half or first two thirds of the year, have been canceled. So, Evil Con up in Evansville, Momo Con down in Atlanta. The Nashville Comic Con and Akai Con, also in the Middle Tennessee area, have all been postponed until 2021 due to, again, concerns about the coronavirus. Um, while that sucks, like I said, we definitely, I, I think David would agree with me, we definitely mm-hmm. um, wanted to attend all those. We def- we also definitely understand why they were postponed yep. and uh, support those decisions. So be on the lookout for us at the Geek Garage there at those events next year when they return in 2021. Of course, all those details will be provided at a future date. Coming up this week, finally, the debut of our blog post, Comic Corner. We've been saying for a long time we're going to get to that in June. June's here. We haven't done it because why would we? (laughs) Uh, And now suddenly we're realizing, oh shit, we promised this. We better get to it. So Right. We're like, oh shit, it is June. (laughs) Yes, it is the middle of June, basically, in fact. (laughs) Right. uh, Today is Friday, June the 12th. Um, You will probably be hearing this podcast by Monday, June the 15th. So uh, sometime by the end of next week. Uh, next Friday, the 19th or so, we should have our first post up on the website about comics. Uh, I started mine uh, today. I started typing it up. I've been thinking about it for a few days. I started typing it up today. Uh, it is going to be over The Punisher Max by Garth Enos uh, and several others. The The Enos run, the first 50 issues are the best. Uh, so I'll focus in on those. Spoiler alert for mine. Uh, David, do you want to... Uh, go a little inside baseball and give out your first post as well. Yeah, yeah, mine's going to be the 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 first volume of Batman Nightfall, um, and that is the one the the infamous uh, Bane origin story, the the backbreaker one. Uh, a lot of liberties were taken from that for Nolan's uh, Dark Knight Rises, and I I was a big fan of. The, bane and the concept of bane and so i finally wanted to dive into some of the comic book lore wrap my head around that and i absolutely fucking loved it so i wanted to choose that as my first comic book to write for for the uh the comic corner so that's what i'll be doing that is an excellent choice and as i recall Mm -hmm. you've actually talked about that before so you spoiled your own spoiler uh (laughs) that is a really good choice though i I enjoy that run immensely and for for longtime fans of Batman or longtime comics readers, you're probably familiar with that uh, that story arc. It was a big deal when it happened, yeah. and uh, had a lot of reverberations throughout Batman lore. So, very excited to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. As always, we have the Facebook group page, fans of the Geeky Garage podcast, where you, uh, the 12 listeners we have, are allowed to get together and post and talk about how terrible the show is and how awful we are, and also yep. how all the other members of the Facebook page are doing geekdom incorrectly. Yes. Um, we do have some polls up from time to time about different things. We had one over who was a more effective villain, the Green Goblin or the Joker. The Joker won pretty handily, which is incorrect, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Um, yep. we're not here to relitigate the past. Nope. The point is, like I said, half of the fun of being a nerd is telling other nerds they're doing it incorrectly. Mm-hmm. I say that every episode because it's true. And I will continue yes. to say it until morale improves. <laughs> so it won't. check that out. That is Spoiler. the fans of the Facebook group fans <laughs> podcast people. 
<laughs> I honestly I can't remember. I, I think it's Geek Garage podcast fans you know just uh, just go to the geekgaragepodcast.com there's a link somewhere and you'll find it uh, yeah. you're resourceful finally uh we have our patreon because we are beggars uh it starts at i think two dollars a month something like that david that's cheaper than a cup of coffee yep and uh we actually i believe we finally got it fixed i a few of you that were trying to sign up uh thank you by the way um and sorry for your trouble we finally well I didn't do anything. The the software developers behind the scenes at Patreon fixed it. Uh, they, uh, since with both tiers, the $2 tier and the $5 tier, you get a free uh, button and sticker set. Uh, and of course we need to mail that to you. It asks for a address. It didn't give you a place to fucking put your goddamn address. And so people were like texting me, be like, Hey bro, I'm trying to like, throw free money at you but your stupid patreon page uh won't let me enter in my address uh so i do believe that is fixed so if you're listening to this and you have tried to become a patron in the past or if you are interested just know that it is now fixed and you can safely once again give us your money yes uh, as opposed to before where you could just give us your money and we would do stupid foolish things with it right uh, speaking of buttons i believe david you still have a few of the evil con exclusive buttons um, yes that we were going to have for the convention obviously since that's not happening anymore um mm-hmm. i think we decided to just kind of give those away yep yep we yeah. we were basically planning on giving them away anyways like when we went to the convention right but, they were originally supposed to be exclusive for people that went to the convention but now since it's canceled yeah. none of us are so none of us <laughs> are exclusive uh so rather than waste the buttons that all have 2020 printed on them we figure fuck it we'll just give them to whoever wants one right so if yep. you want one get it david on the social media he will be more than happy to send you one in the little envelope that he uh self addresses and stamps himself and will draw you a little design on it yes it's it's uh it's pretty cool like i got the 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 bubble mailers from amazon and they're actually like pretty they're blue and they're pretty close to our color scheme like for our logo like the dark blue part um so they're kind of neat now now we're going to be sued by amazon because we stole their blue by two shades (laughs) life is good um but yeah hit, hit david up on the facebook group page the fans of the geek garage podcast he would be more than happy to send you a button uh if you find me on facebook it's not me so i don't know (laughs) uh and that uh thus ends our pre-roll so david let's talk about the reason for the season so to speak yes let us do that right after the music right now Ted, you ready to talk about some Sony PlayStation news? Yes. <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> You're like, uh, if I have to with this fucking guy. Uh, so yeah, yesterday, Thursday the 11th, Sony came out, uh, uh, you know, ball swinging. Uh, just they, they, they came out the gate pretty fucking strong. Um, you know, they, they announced some much anticipated news uh, surrounding the PlayStation 5, some of the games that are uh, that are going to release with the console or soon thereafter or later on down the road in the next couple of years. And I got to say, there wasn't really anything that I wasn't impressed by. But uh, uh, Ted, what were your what were your initial thoughts? Um. I have never been a huge quote unquote gamer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've, I've played games and, um, you know, enjoyed them. I'm not saying that like I, I have it, but I've never really been like what most people would identify as a gamer. Yeah. So I More kind of, of like a... to myself, the PS4, this is going to be the last like generation that I buy a console. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't play it even as much as I, you know, played my Xbox 360 before it. And, I just kind of like, I just have, have been losing interest in, in games. Um, and then I saw the PS five or part of the PS five reveal. And I was like, these motherfuckers tricked me into it again. Uh, <laughs> damn you, Sony. Uh, so I am, I, I'm probably not going to be one of the first adopters, 
but I'm sure. definitely intrigued by by it so far. Like I said at the beginning, they announced and it's like they designed this specifically for me. They were like, right. "Oh, oh, there's a new Hitman and a new Resident Evil game." Ted, <laughs> gut check. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was like, "Sony, you beautiful bastards!" Like, this is probably the only time that I've watched a console reveal and wanted to buy one right out the gate like typically like i'm like oh yeah that looks good but you know i can wait like this one i'm like oh, fuck like i know i'm not gonna have the money for it but man like if i did i would i would definitely plan on having that shit like right out the gate like it it looks really good um yeah it does yeah so <clears throat> To get the ball rolling, we'll, we'll start with the console and we'll go ahead and get the jokes out of the way early so we can talk about the serious stuff here in just a few minutes. It looks yes. like Wally's girlfriend. <laughs> so, yes, I've heard Wally's girlfriend. Um, I've heard the Batman building downtown um, in yeah, downtown both, Nashville. Both in Nashville. Yeah, yeah uh, I've heard a wireless router or an amalgamation of all three. Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely a departure from the, I guess, the classic, or at least the the last three iterations of the PlayStation, the like the black um, shell and everything. Like this one's a stark white, which is very again a huge departure. But yeah, I think it looks all right. I mean, it's you know, change isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not what I would have imagined that it looked like because again, the PS2, the PS3, the PS4, like they're mm. very they're a little boring. Well, I wasn't going to say that. I, I I could see that argument, but like they all look similar right like sure. they're all, again they're all black they're all fairly module modular you know right this one is not like that which is it, i think it looks cool like i said it's yeah. not the design i would have pictured but i don't hate it yeah it's it's almost like you know when you see like concept cars and magazines and then you know like or, or someone does like a concept for like a a car for next year and then you know the the car comes out and it's it's nothing like it uh, this is kind of like a concept console almost, but they actually made it yeah. look like that. It actually reminds me a little bit of like a supercar. Right. In the, in just kind of like the design and, and the curves to it. It's not like um, your typical machine, so to speak. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. The more I look at it, the more I kind of dig it. I think it's the only thing about it that I think is kind of weird is where the disc tray is uh i actually do not know where the disc tray is well in the photo i'm looking at which again is on the official sony blog mm -hmm. um their playstation blog it's kind of like on the lower right hand side of the front which i'm assuming i don't know if this is going to be able to lay oh, okay flat, yeah i see it but you see that it looks it's just like a it's yeah it's just, just a little, little slit little yeah slot. yeah yeah um I, and the only reason I think it looks weird there is because that side kind of bulges out a little further. Sure. Which, I mean, again, it makes sense. The disc drive is there, but... Um, yeah, that's pretty much the only difference between that and the the, the digital version, um, which I, I guess is a good segue into yeah. talking about like the, the console, like the tech specs of the console or consoles themselves, is that this is uh, a new thing. Well, not completely new, like you know, Sony will uh, traditionally for a couple of their consoles have, you know, released the, like a, a slightly bigger version and then like a slim version, you know, I think they did that right. with the PS3, right? And then I, I don't know. Yeah, they, the they, they've done that with all the PlayStations in some okay. form or fashion, like right, the, right. the original PlayStation, after it had been out for several years, they came out with the PSX, which was oh yeah, that's right the same software or the same hardware, just in a smaller shell, I should say, yeah. excuse me. And then they did that with the PS2. They came out with the PS2 Slim, um, or maybe that was the PS3. But the PS2 had a had a had a slim edition come out as well. I think I, they may not have called it that, but there was a thinner version that came out. Right. Um, and the PS3, the same thing, a small smaller version came out. And then the PS4 kind of broke the mold a little bit because they came out with like the PS4 Pro. Right. Yeah. Um, which I don't. I just have the old fashioned PS4 cause I'm a poor person. Um, but, <laughs> same bro. Same. Uh, I don't know if there was a size discrepancy between the consoles. I'm sure our listeners are screaming right now. Like, <laughs> Actually. Um, but uh, it, it's definitely not new that they have released multiple versions of the same console. And then of course there've been different like skins, so to speak. For, right. Yeah. For game specific releases and things like that. Yeah. Um, 
but basically, so it seems like they're 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 wanting to do two versions right out the right out the gate with this one. So you have you know the the regular disc version that we're all familiar with, the one that accepts you know PlayStation game discs, and then there's a digital version. I guess that that is marketed towards the folks that are going that are that want to go strictly digital that that download their games. Yeah, um, I'm not privy, so to speak, to game sales, but I would say that as streaming and digital media has become more ubiquitous over the last several years, particularly over the last like six or seven years that the PS4 and Xbox One have been out. Mm-hmm. I would say that probably digital game sales have maybe not begun to rival, but are are gaining ground in terms of overall video game sales. So, right, it's it's just quicker and easier for them to get it out, like to, right. to distribute I mean, online. It's, it's probably cheaper too. Oh yeah, for sure. Not creating physical media. Now, yeah. I, I you know I can't say that one hundred percent because they have to have servers and they have to you know have, right. have data class to store all this information, but. Um, just looking at it, like from an outsider's perspective, excuse me, it seems like it would be cheaper in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. Like right out the gate, having, having two different versions. And, uh, I, from what I've read, uh, there's, you know, still relatively limited information on, on the consoles themselves, but, you know, we did get a little bit more information yesterday, and from what they've said, there really is little difference as far as performance goes between the two consoles. That it's, uh, for the most part, it is strictly just one has a disk drive, the other doesn't. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm definitely not like a a computer expert by any stretch. I I wonder if maybe the digital version maybe runs a little smoother because it's not reading media sure like via laser but again i I don't know that's just me wondering because (laughs) right i I mean i do know that they they both are supposed to have solid state drives as opposed to you know the the traditional hard drives with spinning discs and all that so right uh, which is very exciting we we did you know me and uh, my my good friend christian uh i forget which episode it was it was just a couple episodes ago maybe 57 um we talked about it was right after the the unreal engine um video Mm -hmm. hit the uh the internet uh in in the interwebs and we talked about uh all that fancy shit and then we kind of dived into some of the the tech specs that we knew so far from the new xbox and playstation um yeah yeah It, it seems like sony is is transferring to this uh ssd for a couple of different reasons, but I would say the biggest one is that it's going to make the PlayStation run a lot faster. Yeah, for sure. It seems like the big talking point that a lot of people are bandying about is that Sony's target for bandwidth on this new solid state drive is five gigabytes a second. Which wow. Is, uh, pretty, pretty crazy. That's supposed yeah. to be like a hundred times faster than the PS4, which Jesus is, uh, Christ. yeah. Um, that's basically going to make loading screens, non-existent which for a lot of people um that's I'm, well basically for anybody that rules because you can be you know immediately into the next part of the game or what have you right um, for people like me that remember the ps1 us old folks um <laughs> we played resident evil where it had to load every time you open a fucking door so you you young bastards now <laughs> don't know how good you have it yeah man i I, I'd honestly, I'd like to go back and play some of the old like PS one games just to like re-experience all the things like, cause there's little things like that. Like you just mentioned that you forget about where like technology has evolved for the better in, in so many aspects you realize like, Oh yeah. Anytime you move from one part of the map to another, regardless of your location, there's like a loading screen and you're like, come on, man, I just opened it a fucking door. Yeah. I literally haven't even left the room. The camera just moved. Right. Um, but I mean, it, you know, it's, it's little stuff like that. It, it's hard yeah. to complain about it. You know, it, it's fun to joke, but it's not a serious complaint really. Yeah. No, it's, it's all in good fun. One of the uh, weird things 
about the SSD though, as long as we're on the topic, it's 825 gigabytes, which is just like such an arbitrary number to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure there's some, I'm not a computer scientist. I don't claim to be. So I'm sure that that's probably like an inflection point where it's like, if we go any higher then we lose that speed that we want and anything lower is like not fat, not like the marginal return is not high enough to go any lower than that. I'm sure that they crunched a lot of math and, and, mm-hmm. or at least I'm hoping they didn't, they were just like throwing darts, like eight twenty five. that's the winner. Let's go <laughs> put it in. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I, I don't try and, and act or be smart enough to understand the, the tech numbers behind the, the tech specs mm. because I just, I don't have the time to, to wrap my head around it. Um, but I mean, it, it all sounds really impressive, but I, I, I kind of get what you're saying where the, they kind of have to have to do this, this weighing of like, okay, well There's we want to, yeah. yeah, we want to increase the graphics, but you know, what uh, is the, the increase in, in the, the tech specs going to be able to compensate uh, for the, the increase in, in graphics quality? Is it going to come out of flush to where like loading times are exactly the same? Like, how is that going to work? Um, so yeah, it's those kinds of things are always interesting to me. Like how how those kinds of decisions are are weighed. Right, and it eight hundred twenty five gigs sounds like a lot, but a lot of games now are are huge. Yeah, um, like the last game that I got really really into um, was Red Dead Redemption Two, mm-hmm. and that was well over a hundred gigs, like on launch day. Um, yeah. Or pretty close to 100 gigs on launch day, at least. So um, I can't imagine what some games are now. Like, I know Call of Duty, I, I saw just the the most recent Call of Duty game just had another patch. And people were complaining because it was like another um, so many gigs. And that game's like 200 gigs now or something, which Jesus. is just ridiculous. Um, yeah. now, there's a lot that goes into that. Like, there's a lot of game modes and stuff. But it's still only one game. And it's taking up basically a quarter of your total space. So... Mm-hmm. Um, I am seeing here that you'll be able to add your own drive or your extend your storage, but only a certain SSDs will be compatible. And I, if I understand correctly, that's from a technology standpoint, not a brand specific thing where Sony's not going to be like, you can only use a Sony drive. Right. Um, I think it's just because the PS five is cutting Pro- edge. Right. Yeah. Proprietary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it'll probably be m- more so the drive has to have specific tech specs rather than it be like a proprietary Sony drive. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And again, um, if you're a person that likes to play a lot of different games, you're probably going to want to invest in one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I've i never personally faced the issue of running out of space, like where I have to go and delete like game data to to make room for something Mm -hmm. but you and i i think kind of like no pun intended play on the same wavelength like we're both like yeah quote unquote casual gamers where like we we play every so often like we're not the the people that play like every single day for several hours right or whatever yeah it's um and that's not a knock you know no no not at all um this is not my primary hobby this is not your primary hobby for other people it is and that's fine but again like you said we're going to be on different wavelengths than those type those type of people so yeah while storage is probably not an issue for us i do know some people that i've you know some some other friends of mine that storage will be an issue for them in short order yeah yeah for sure if it is for them i'm sure it is for other people as well um but i mean it looks like you know sony's Sony's been in the video game, you know, game, no pun intended, for a long time. So mm-hmm. um, they know what they're doing. They, they've got to figure it figured out. Yeah, yeah, Hopefully. definitely. <laughs> what <laughs> What do you think about the controllers? I, I mean, honestly, I think they're pretty fucking cool. Like, I'm I'm excited to to kind of uh, again with the puns, like get my hand on it. Like, right. hands um, like it. It just like it. It looks a little bit different as far as the shape goes. It kind of looks like a, a a mix between a traditional PlayStation controller and the the more robustness of an Xbox controller. For sure. Um, but like I'm as far as like the haptic feedback triggers uh, and and the the uh, 
adaptive triggers and motion sensors like i don't know like i'm i'm very curious to see what it feels like um yeah the first thing i thought when i saw it was i was looking for steve jobs because i was like it's the apple i sony <laughs> playstation controller it um, really does kind of have that feel to it it, it kind of does I like it. I have big hands. So like I, I have huge palms, but relatively small fingers, like compared to my palms. So the right. PlayStation controller has always felt weird to me. Okay. Um, it doesn't feel quite right. Whereas like the larger controllers always felt better because like I said, I have these massive gorilla palms. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously looking at just a still photo, it's, it's hard to gauge what the size of it is, but it does appear to have some size to it when compared with the standard PS4, PS3, PS2 controller. Right. Um, and they've basically, Sony's basically used this design since the PS1. Yeah. Uh, the first DualShock came out. So it's yeah. it's been tweaked some, you know, they, they've, they've updated the design language a little bit, but that same basic core uh, has been there. And this was not completely different. You know, it's still very easily identified as a Sony PlayStation controller, but it does have yeah. a little bit of a more distinctive shape. Yeah, I, I think the I'm not positive, but I I think I remember reading that the 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 buttons, you know, they're traditionally like the the different colors. Like I, I mean, I I can't even remember what the like the X and the the circle and the triangle. Mm-hmm. Um, you the know, the, the, yeah, but uh, it doesn't look like they are color coded for the new controller. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, if if they are not, then that's kind of an interesting aesthetic choice, but not necessarily a deal breaker for me. I mean, I feel pity right. for you if if it's the thing that if it's the straw that breaks the camel's back for you, then yeah, you know, whatever. I, looking but, at the design language of this controller, it, it I'm trying to picture it with that classic like green, red, purple, pink, yeah, like button layout, and it doesn't. It seems like it would look bad. Um, in my opinion, but Mm -hmm. the one thing I've noticed about this controller, or at least it looks like it again, in in still photos, it's kind of hard to tell anything with certainty, but it looks like the buttons aren't raised. And what I mean by that is if you consider, um, any, really any controller, um, but the PlayStation controllers in particular, the buttons have always been raised up. So you get that like tactile press, right? These look almost like they're flush with the with the action and you right press in rather than press it down so I, i'm kind of curious to see if that's the fact because that seems like it would make the d-pad much more difficult to use i don't know that there would be a lot of change in the um the the others i don't, I don't know what you want to call them but like the the action keys so to speak the square triangle circle x buttons because there's a little more space around those um but particularly for something like a fighting game it seems like uh the d-pad if that were the case would be a bitch to use now i'm sure a lot of people out there that are listening are like actually we use the analog stick for fighting games now because it's not 1995 you fucking plebeian um and and good for you i don't know i play mortal kombat 2 i don't know about any of this shit um Um, Oh no! Do do you have any thoughts on that, or do you? No. So I, I actually, um, I think you have the blog post pulled up too, with like all the announcements and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just clicked on the one of the pictures for the the controller. It's the one with the the two controllers sitting on. I guess that's the the charging dock. Oh, okay. And if you if you click it, and if you can actually zoom in, it does look like they are beveled. Um, like like usual it's it's yeah. really hard to tell because like they're, they, they they're look clear. clear actually the buttons look clear so yeah but they they have like that glo- like yeah. that um sh- sheen or, or um they do I have sure? some light reflection some shadows yes. so you're you're right, right. Um, so it does look like they are corrected. so it does look but i i see what you're saying uh like w- what you were saying about how it's it's kind of hard to tell with the way that the picture was taken and mm. just from like the the minimalistic design it kind of looked like you know the they weren't raised like they traditionally are that you know the button would actually be pushed into the right the, the controller remember to- uh, here at the geek garage we take research very seriously <laughs> well, we always hell. try to know exactly what we're talking about yes exactly like we are we are professionals to the nines professional um, fuck-ups <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> um, yes, but I mean, I think it's cool that it comes, or well, I don't know if it comes with a charging dock. Uh, seems like that might be something you have to buy separately. But yeah, I, I don't know because I don't know that they've announced what's in the box, so to speak. Yeah, okay. um, but I would say that probably you don't get that because I can't recall that having ever been part of the initial purchase of right. any console. Uh, yeah especially not like a playstation yeah they might as well write in big fucking letters on the box like you're lucky you get one fucking controller you plebeian <laughs> right right <laughs> uh which i mean is understandable because the controllers are not cheap as well i mean they're basically the price yeah. of a game and so they, they are in fact the price of a game normally yeah. um but i think to to i mean the money isn't in the hardware the money's in the software mm-hmm so, um, uh, these are not cheap to manufacture and they probably sell at a loss right. or no profit, like maybe at cost. Yeah. Um, but the money is really in the software. So that's a lot of baseball for you there, people. <laughs> right. I mean, like for what it's worth, like I, I've had my PlayStation for, I don't know, uh, over two years now, almost three. Mm -hmm. And I, we haven't had to buy a second controller. Like there's been a couple times where we thought about buying another one just so like we can keep them both charged. And if one dies and we forgot to like, you know, put it on the charger, like we have a, a backup or just, you know, any old reason why you would have a second controller. Uh, but we never really had to because this one has lasted us. Um, and I've gotten mad and like thrown it down on the ground and like beat the shit out of it. Well, I will not beat the shit out of it, but you know, so I mean, they're like, honestly, a six we do not condone. Control. <laughs> so like, I guess what I'm trying to say is a $60 price point for a controller, in my opinion, isn't bad. Like, yes. Is it, is it painful to shell out $60 for, you know, a controller to play, you know, the, the console and a game. Sure, but you know, is it a terrible price point? Not really. I mean, it considering how well they hold up, in my experience. Yeah, it's. I kind of look at it the same way um, as purchasing a console, kind of in and of itself. Like, yes, it's a lot of money that you're dropping at one time, but at the same time, like you've got to consider how much enjoyment you're going to get out of that. Right. Like I bought my PS4 probably less than six months after launch, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so that would have been what, like 2013, 2014. Um, it's 2020 and I've played wow, it. Wow, has it really been out that, yeah. that long? Damn. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's. I mean, I've definitely gotten my money's worth out of it and, and it's hard to, you know, it's hard to complain about that. But Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. Um, so yeah, uh, you want to move on to, I think we talked about, pretty much everything we can r regarding the the controllers I, I guess we could go on for a little while but i think we should get to some of the fucking games yeah that's that's the whole point right <laughs> <laughs> kind of i mean yeah. we we gushed for long enough about the the hardware so let's talk about the actual games yeah um, um do you want to start uh yeah sure um so I guess if we just want to, you know, go right out the gate with what we're excited about, uh, basically the, the game that they, they started the, the reveal with, uh, well, I guess the, the technically the first one that they started with, I believe was the expansion for, uh, for Grand Theft Auto five, which I mean is, is definitely exciting. Don't get me wrong, but my, basically my favorite game of all time was, uh, the PS4 Spider-Man game. Like, I don't I I can't tell you how much I fucking love this game. And to see that, like, the, the first, the, the game, like, came out two years ago, 2018, and to see that they already have coming out Spider-Man, Miles Morales, that is, uh, from my understanding, like, they didn't officially announce, yes, it is being released with a console, but it, also has the ambiguous holiday 2020 release date i'm just gonna go ahead and assume that it's being released with a console or pretty close to it um it blew my fucking mind seeing the trailer like 
just the idea or the the fact that it's coming out so close to the first one um the, uh, the, there was we were kind of talking right before we started the podcast about all the confusion <laughs> that uh, people have with with this game right where where you know people like they were asking like is this supposed to be a sequel is this an expansion for the first one is it considered a dlc like what the hell is going on and so like I think both Sony and Insomniac Games like came out with official statements saying like it's not an expansion, it's not a DLC, it's not Spider-Man 2, like it's not the official sequel. It is like it's it's like an extension, not an expansion or or maybe the the other way around. It's just like it's basically the game but from Miles's point of view, I guess. Um so I'm kind of led to believe that Spider-Man doesn't have much to do with it. But um, Ted, I, I know that you're not like a huge Spider-Man person. You, you watched me play this a little bit, but I don't, I don't what, what were your thoughts on, on this trailer? Um, it, it looked good. I mean, I've always wanted there to be a good Spider-Man game and there have been some pretty good Spider-Man games. Um, it seems like the Insomniac game actually really got, down the physics so to speak of mm -hmm. spider-man um so that was cool i like miles morales a lot as a character so I'm, I'm interested to see this game um i'm interested to see more of this game because of that yeah um so one thing that i like about it is that it's not just the ps4 spider-man game but they put in a different character in, in the story like it right. seems like like you said that it's going to be a standalone game where even if it's, you know, there's a lot of overlap with the PS4 Spider-Man game, it's still going to be original enough that it's a standalone rather than like a glorified DLC, hopefully, at least. Right. Yeah. And, and I mean, they, uh, with their official statement and like, you know, Sony's presentation yesterday, like they said that they designed it for the PS5. Like it's, it's not one of the games where like it comes out like right at the end of the life of the PS4 and, and they just at, port it. yeah. And, and yeah. And they poured it over like, you know, within the first year or so. Yeah. Uh, it, this, you know, they, they were pretty blunt and upfront about saying, yes, this game was designed for the PS5. So yeah, I, that, that is definitely like harping back to what I was saying about this is the first time I've ever wanted to get a console on launch day. Mm -hmm. This game like sealed the deal for, for that, that thing for me was like being able to buy these together. And I've seen, I don't know if it's for real, for real, but, or, or if it's just a concept, but I saw a, what appeared to be a limited edition miles Morales console, um, I mean, they, they've done, you know, limited edition consoles before plenty mm -hmm. of times. They even did one for Spider-Man. Yeah. And um, so it wouldn't be out of the norm for them to do one. And, and But it was like red instead of um, the, uh, well, it, it was black. Like the console was black. Uh, like it, uh, you know, well, you know, there's a white one, white version and then a black version. Um, but they're like, it was the accent instead of blue was red um and it had like a big like spider on the side of it um and i was like oh i need it <laughs> so so yeah i just talking about it i'm i'm like man i'm excited and, and i plus i just beat the uh the dlc and finally got 100 percent on the uh the main story campaign mode um just just last night actually um so so yeah, I was like, I, I gotta beat it because I know the the new or something new is coming out, or, or I gotta you know make room for another game. So, um, but what about you, Ted? What uh, what what game or games? I, I know you mentioned Resident Evil and um, and and Hitman. Yeah, I would say those are probably my my top two um, that I'm the most excited for. I love. Uh, both of those series really i mean i remember the first time i ever played resident evil uh and i was just like immediately hooked mm -hmm. um i would have been probably like 12 when was it <laughs> resident evil 2 came out yeah it, um, it it goes back and uh like i said i remember literally um 
like I can, I can, I'm not going to because nobody, nobody gives a shit. But like, I remember vividly, like everything about the night that I played that game the first time, like it had such an impact on me and I like yeah. growing up and like loving horror to begin mm-hmm. with, like that was just the next logical step in, in, in what I would be into, I guess. So yeah. very excited for that. Resident Evil 7 took me a little bit to get into, but once I got into it, I was all in. Um, and this is a continuation of that story. It looks it, like it seems it like part of the same character, and it's um, maybe not a direct sequel in the sense of it picks up like immediately after, but it does look like it's a continuation of that story. So very excited for that. Plus, it looks fucking awesome. Yeah, it does Obviously. look beautiful. I uh, I didn't get a chance to play seven that much. I started playing it when a buddy of mine lent me their copy, and but he like lent me several games um at once and so like i played each one like a little bit so I, unfortunately i didn't get a chance to play resident evil 7 a whole lot but i might dive into it just so i'm ready for resident evil 8 whenever it comes out um 7 is on sale right now i almost bought it okay um i think it's like 20 dollars right now um yeah that sounds about right maybe maybe a little less than that but um it's definitely worth it definitely definitely worth it yeah uh and then the other one like i said is hitman i have been a fan of hitman almost as long as i've been a fan of resident evil i remember um playing hitman 2 sort of on a whim it was just one of those like went to hollywood video with some friends back when you did that thing back when that was a thing you did and we were all like what is this we'd never heard of it played it i don't think they really liked it but i was sold and immediately was like the second I have money, I'm going to own this and, and <laughs> did eventually buy it. I've, I've gotten all of them over the years, played all of them over the years. Um, I really, really enjoy this um, retooling, so to speak, that um, IO and Warner Brothers have done over these last couple of games. And this, of course, is the finale to their trilogy, and I'm very excited for it. I'm all in on it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've i never... I never really got a chance to get into Hitman for whatever reason, but... Um, I I might have to just just to play this because it it looks pretty damn good. Yeah, the um, the first um, reimagining, so to speak, the one that came out on PS4 and Xbox One uh, a few years ago is you can probably get it for like ten or twenty bucks. Um, cool. And then the second one has been on sale recently. Um, I I don't know at what price point because like I said I have it so I wasn't really looking. Um, but it has been on sale recently and you could probably find it for fairly cheap as well. Yeah. That's a, that's a, a positive thing, uh, or a plus about getting into games, quote unquote, unfortunately a little bit later, like after like a year or two after they've been released is that like, you can pick them up on like the PlayStation store for like literally half the price. Heavy discounts. You... Yeah. Yeah. Um, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say, like, you know, the typically games, like, when brand new, when they come out, they're, like, 55, 60 bucks, right? So, like, yeah. like the, the new, like, the, the Resident Evil 2 um, remaster or, or whatever that they did, um, I mean, and it wasn't even that long ago, what, like, maybe a year, year uh, and a half? A year somewhere. and a half ago, yeah. Yeah, and, and I, it, it, I, I was looking, it's on the store for, like, 20 bucks, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I was looking for The Last of Us as well because you know the second one is coming out here soon, I think in the fall, um, mm-hmm. and and that is also twenty bucks. So, you know, talk about like you know silver linings for having to unfortunately get into games a little bit later after they come out is that hey yeah, you save I, I money. Say one thing that I really like about the availability of digital games is that a lot of them they seem to go on sale more often right so like the the playstation store always has different stuff on sale and a lot of it you can get for way cheap they just had um a sale going on it actually might still be going on called like days of play i think and there were a bunch of good games or um like well-reviewed and positively talked about games that were pretty cheap comparatively speaking to what they normally are like um i picked up a few games and I, i think I got Injustice 2 for like $5. Oh, wow. Um, I got Shadow of War. I think that's what it was called. The Lord of the Rings sequel. Okay. Um, for like 12 Um, So you can get some pretty decent games or pretty, you know, 
positively reviewed games for for not a lot of money. Now, new games are still like fifty nine ninety nine, you know. Right. Um, but even the Resident Evil two and three bundle, it's called like the uh, Raccoon City Pack or something like that. I think it was only sixty, and one of those is a brand new game, you know. So yeah, um, that's that's even that's a pretty good deal. Mm-hmm. And the Resident Evil two remake was fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I, I've only heard good things like everyone that i've talked to like like hardcore fans of resident evil like casual friends friends of fan, resident evil like they all say that the the remake or remaster was was absolutely fantastic so yeah it, it was phenomenal yeah so i'm That's definitely old now. we're talking about the ps5 <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so yeah, with that, let's let's move forward with some more games. Um, did you you didn't ever play Horizon Zero Dawn, did you? Um, not really. That's not really my preferred genre, I guess. Sure. Um, open world. Not, yeah. It, open world sounds good, but to me, it's just like a big empty space a lot of the time. Sure. You know, um, there are some open world games I really like. I I never got into Horizon. I've I've always wanted to pick it up because you know a lot of my friends have been like due to rules it's definitely worth it but uh i just never have the new one looks fucking good though yeah it's so yeah i i loved loved horizon zero dawn it was the game that Lindsay and i my wife for those of you who don't know me as a friend uh it's the first game that we picked up for the console when we when we grabbed the ps4 and we played it together forever like we played the shit out of this game and loved every second of it um the the storyline is great uh that this was my first unless you want to consider like grand theft auto open world which i guess technically it is um especially like gta 5 um it, with the exception of that like this was my first open world game where it was just like the map was so big and there's just so many so many things to do so many main quests so many side quests um little mini things to do um there's just so much going on so you can like savor every ounce of money that you paid for this game uh there's just so much to get out of it and to see that they have a sequel in the works was uh, thrilling to to say the least i i I was very excited and honestly like i mean there was no gameplay for it it was only a trailer and on top of that there's no release date so i think it's pretty safe to say we're going to be waiting another year or two maybe until like 21 22 um for it to to come out which i'm cool with you know they can take their time make it really good just like the first one but you know it is uh, it's so it's called horizon forbidden west and i believe it was established in the first one that it kind of takes place in the west you know around the the california area i think i I could be wrong like san francisco but yeah um, i'm not sure where it takes place exactly but the the tagline I'm seeing on it is just uh, it follows the game's heroine as she treks westward. Right. So. Yeah. And, and basically the the new thing uh, essentially is like living creatures. Like <coughs> excuse me. So you know the thing with Horizon Zero Dawn is that you know you, you have like these mech dinosaurs uh, you know the, they're not explicitly stated as mech dinosaurs but they might as well be you know mechanical you know prehistoric creatures so horizon forbidden west seems to be where we're getting our first look at like like creatures that survived this you know this zero dawn apocalypse that that supposedly happens um so that's something that i'm definitely excited for i mean there's definitely the the mech dinosaurs still in living in the world that you know the you have to worry about but it's it's going to be really interesting um seeing and and playing in that combination of of both the organic and the mechanical world so that's something that I'm, I'm really looking forward to aside from just the beauty of it being in ps5 graphics because honestly like the ps4 graphics for for zero dawn are absolutely gorgeous like just running through fields and like seeing each individual blade of grass move independently like 
is incredibly mind blowing. Um, so I, I can't wait to see what, what they do or able to do with the PS five. So, so yeah. Um, but what else, uh, Ted, uh, what else has got you excited? Um, I mean, there's new Gran Turismo coming out yeah and the car geek in me is very stoked on that yeah um, i i love gt uh gran turismo uh three like yeah uh, on, on the the ps2 like that was yeah <laughs> yeah and, and and like i i'm not a huge car guy um you, you definitely know a little bit more than i do or a lot more than i do but when i played that game i actually learned a little bit about cars which was kind of cool like just simply about like other makes and models that are existent uh, that are in yeah. existence but that, that's one of the things about Gran Turismo that I, I always really liked is it was more of a, a sim type game where it, sure. it was definitely based in reality where whereas some of the games like Need for Speed or Test Drive um, which most of our listeners probably have never fucking heard of uh, those <laughs> were old racing games um, they were a little more like especially Need for Speed there for a minute was just like hey let's make Fast and the Furious the video game but call it Need for Speed <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, which i mean they were fun but like gran turismo was more like oh if i add this compression ratio or, or whatever like it you could actually affect how your car drove mm-hmm. um one that i'm not as familiar with uh but i did see that it was announced as uh it's called def loop which yes it sounds hard as shit but yeah uh, it's by that's Arcane the one with the videos uh, uh, sorry uh, it, it, is that the is that the one with like the 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 assassins? Uh, it it does appear, um, something like that. Uh, like I said, I, I don't really know much about it. I know it's by Arcane Studios, um, who created Dishonored, which were fairly right. new, but also like very hardcore loved by a lot of people, um, in that niche where it was like um a stealth sort of assassin game but you could also just make your person like a tank and mow through everybody and be like fuck it sound the alarm bitch i wish you would (laughs) um i know a lot of people were super into it there were a lot of different like youtube uh personalities and and youtube videos came out of people trying to do like perfect runs and doing like trick runs and stuff like that so um that wasn't necessarily my cup of tea as much i'm not really a magic and swords guy but uh, mm-hmm. a lot of those videos were cool to watch so I'm, I'm interested in this the art style particularly is like very striking to me so I'm, I'm interested more about it it may it may be something that ends up not being for me but it definitely looks cool at least from what i've seen so far right yeah it, it's almost like they downplayed the graphics a little bit like there's a couple of games that were revealed yesterday where like the graphics aren't necessarily like the like the cutting edge graphics like super right. realistic that that a lot of game game makers and developers are, are pushing nowadays and obviously we're not knocking that you know we've we've talked those games up a lot during this mm. episode but you know it, it was interesting to see uh, um, this one and a couple others sporting very different animated styles to to the game yeah it's it's very super stylized it it almost looks like i don't know that it is cell shaded but it looks kind of cell shaded yeah um and it's it reminds me this is such a like a basic ass thing to say but it reminds me a little bit of how sin city looked okay where it's like um basically like a black screen and then there's splashes of color the the, the screenshot i'm seeing is like black and kind of like a tannish color and then like the orange desert i'm assuming and sun and it looks awesome super yeah. awesome uh, i don't know that that's what the final game will look like but i kind of hope it is because it looks dope and it, it looks different yeah yeah for sure uh, i was uh, i had never heard of this game um up until yesterday but i was pleasantly surprised like i i have in my notes like the first bullet point under games is like honestly there's no game trailer that I saw where I was like, I don't really have any interest in playing that. Like, was, were there some that I wanted to play more than others? Most definitely. But there weren't any games that were revealed yesterday where I was just like, eh. Like, I thought, you know, like we said at the beginning of the podcast, like Sony came came out, came out the gate swinging. Um, but yeah, like Demon Souls, I, uh, did, did you ever play the original? Um, 
No, I never played Demon Souls. I did play a couple of the Dark Souls games, and like I said, I'm not really a big fantasy guy, so not not for me as much. But I know that those games have huge cult followings. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it it is related to to Dark Souls. Yeah. So Demon Souls was the original. Okay. Uh, and cool. then I believe Dark Souls was uh, the the sequel to that. Or gotcha. it's in the same universe or something. I'm not, again, it's not really for me, so I can't speak fully to the story. But I believe that Demon Souls is the original, and then Dark Souls was a sequel to it. Um, gotcha. So I know it looks beautiful. The graphics are fucking beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And like I said, I know a lot of people love, love, love these games. So the fact that it's getting a full like PS5 upgrade is right. Um, and I, it seems like it's going to have to be a remake. Like, I don't think they can just put a fresh coat of paint on it and call no. it a new game. Like, I'm sure that it's got to be coded differently. And, like, I'm not a computer programmer, so maybe you could speak to that a little more. But it seems like with, what, 10 plus years worth of differences in, in computing power, they'd have to do a lot of upgrades and, and probably would just be better off tearing it down and starting from scratch. For sure. Yeah. And it, it, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like that's kind of what they did for the Resident Evil to remake is that they didn't stick it uh it wasn't verbatim the storyline from the original but it was pretty close so maybe that's kind of what you're alluding to um kind of uh what i was going for is more it may be the same in terms of story but it looks like it's a it's a new like they had to recode the game. Like it's not, they just, they were like, Oh, here's the code from the original game. And now we're going to update the graphics. Like, it seems like they built a new engine for it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that definitely makes sense. Um, um yeah. Yeah. What uh, do you remember seeing the trailer for that game? Uh, Pragmata or Pragmata, how, however you say it. Um, it's the, where it looks, looks like he's in a space suit um and and he sees like that little girl and she's playing with like i think a cat that looks like a hologram or something and then it ends with them like on the moon like looking at earth do you remember that game um no but it's a capcom game and Uh it's probably dope because of that they have been capcom has been on a fucking roll here in the last few days yeah or last few years rather um i know they got a lot of well-deserved shit for I think it was Street Fighter Five that came out and was a fucking you know, dumpster fire at release, but um, they have been doing a lot of awesome shit. Yeah, no, um, you should. After this episode, you should definitely check it out because it, like, when I was watching it, I was like, this looks, this looks like a beautiful movie that you would play, and I bet Ted would love the shit out of it. Like, it seems like something, like it, if this was just an animated movie. Uh, and not a game it seems like something that we would go see in theaters um, right on. so yeah it looks pretty good um but yeah there's there's like a bunch of other little stuff like new titles like um like little devil inside and the the kina Br- bridges spirits game that mm. kind of looks uh, a little not i don't want to say disney but i mean it's definitely more on like the the playful animated side but what what kind of caught my attention aside from the graphic style uh it just being a little bit different than games that came before and after it in the reveal was the 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 voiceover which i believe i'm pretty sure was was ken wantanabe Mm -hmm. um who you know he's been in the the last two godzilla movies he was in inception um i think he's been in one one or two other uh nolan movies but uh yeah that's another thing that kind of grabbed my attention because he just has that very recognizable voice right and it just looks like looks really cool the story seemed very unique um so i was uh, that kind of like grabbed my attention um yeah, so yeah. Uh, one thing that i think is cool about this announcement that they had was um it they didn't just come out with like, oh, these are the Sony games that are releasing with it. Like they went hard with third party games. Yeah. And what I found the most interesting is like they went fairly hard with like indie studio games. Yes. Which I thought was really cool. For sure. Yeah. I, w- when I was, I was reading, I think it might've been the link that you sent me. It, it was just like, uh, or no, it's just on their blog. 
um but yeah they like the the list of indie games i'm looking at it and it's almost i think it might be the the same amount or close to the same amount as like the third party games um, yeah which like you said is is really cool of them to to show those indie developers like so much love like at like the biggest basically the biggest um you know streaming event that that sony does for playstation this year Mm -hmm. Um, aside from like you know when they come back and say oh yeah by the way it'll be on sale tomorrow better have Mm -hmm. your six hundred dollars ready yeah or or however much they haven't announced the price yet right yeah i would say probably i i think 599 is i'm fairly certain that's what the ps3 launched at i think the ps4 launched at 499 I can't remember mm-hmm. 100, but I, I would guess somewhere around the five to six hundred dollar price point. Yeah, um, any less than that, I can't. I can't imagine it being any less than that because no. they would be losing a fucking fortune. And I really can't imagine it being any more than that either, because at, at that point you're going to have people that are like, "I'm not spending seven hundred fucking dollars on a console." You know? Yeah, but um, like you, you can basically, it, my point of view, it, you can look at it as like buying a new computer. Cause that's essentially what you're doing. Like, mm. I mean, you know, granted on a regular, you know, computer, whether it's a PC, Mac, uh, a, a laptop, a desktop, what, what have you. Yes. You can do more than just play games. You can browse the internet or whatever, but like it's at the end of the day, like the console is just a, com- a computer that happens to have a funny keyboard to it one that you can hold in your two hands. Um, and if you just look at the console as a, a computer with that price point, the $600 price point, like that's, that's a pretty good deal for a computer, like 600 bucks, like considering right. the amount of money I spent on my new MacBook pro, which is kind of disgusting, but, uh, I love Macs, So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, it's it's one of those things where once you factor in how much enjoyment you're going to get out of it, you know, probably several years of yeah. of um, entertainment out of it, like it it becomes a little more of an tenable. investment. Yeah, it, it, I was going to say a little more palatable to swallow. Yeah. Um. Now, again, you know, I'm not going to rush right out and buy one, and I don't fault anybody else that doesn't either. You know, not everybody's on. Uh, a position where they can just run out and drop, you know, 700 bucks on a console after tax and buying a couple of games, you know? So, right. Uh, but at the same time, like if, if this is your primary hobby, like I don't fault you for doing that. If nope. you do choose to do that, because you nope. know, you're, especially if you play games more often than someone like me does, you know, if this is your primary hobby and you know, Hey, um, four days a week, I'm going to play two, three hours a day for the next five years. Like you're going to get your money's worth out of it. <laughs> you know? Like, like 5,000 fold basically. Right. So um, it's all about what you enjoy. Like there are people that look at me and like, you buy books and like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? You know, oh, so every, paper, everybody's old school, <laughs> right? Everybody's got what they're into, but, but back to the Indies, like not all indie studios are created equal. So like, I'm sure they're the ones um, now I don't, I don't know these indie studios all off the top of my head, but I'm sure the ones that um, Sony highlighted probably are not like, you know, two people in their garage, or, or their basement or their attic or wherever, like programming a video game for the first time. I'm sure they're right. a little bigger than that, but just the fact that they did it is pretty cool. And um, I will say that there's been a pretty big push in the last few years to highlight more independent studios yeah, um, with their games, which is cool. But the one thing that I saw that I was pretty stoked with, with the Indies was there's a new odd world game, which um, I was pretty shocked by. I didn't realize that they were still going. Uh-huh. Um, and, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked on that. All the world has always been that kind of weird little thing, um, that I don't know has always worked, but has always been interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know if I ever played this. I, I don't think I, I did, but I remember watching the trailer for it and I was like, this looks, this looks interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, the all the world games that I have played, that is definitely the way to describe them as interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looked. I'll just say weird, just like yeah. really I mean, weird. Odd, odd is in the title, you know. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's very appropriately named. Um, yeah. but I still want to play it. <laughs> uh, the other thing I noticed is that Annapurna is apparently um 
involved in some capacity with creating video games, which I did not yeah. know. Annapurna is a, a, a movie, a movie studio. Thing. Right, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they've put out a few movies over the last several years. Some of them have been better than others. Some of them have, in fact, been terrible, but that's movie studios for you. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm interested in that because, like I said, I did not know that they were involved in this, uh, in, in the industry, so to speak, of video games. So I'm kind of curious to see about that. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I was uh, I was yeah. in the same boat when I saw that uh, yesterday. I was like, uh, aren't they associated with movies? Like, I remember their logo, like, flashing up before, like, movies come on uh, and movie trailers. Um, so I was like, I did. I was the same with you. I was like, I didn't I didn't know that they were associated with video game, video games. But that's yeah. I mean, cool. as a production company, they've put out some pretty damn good movies. And like I said, they've put out some duds, too. But sure. Um, I mean, just um just a few they put out that uh people are probably fairly familiar with just over the last couple of years like they did book smart right um, yeah if beale street could talk which was great uh the ballad of buster scruggs was also great mm-hmm. um now some of these were like co-productions but they were involved with them you know so that's yeah th- they uh they kind of know how to pick some of them at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I, man, I, I think I've talked about pretty much everything that, that I had on my list. Like, I mean, we, you, you and I talked before the, uh, we started recording how we didn't want to go through <laughs> all the, all the games. Cause I mean, there were quite a few that, that were revealed yesterday. Yeah. So, uh- I was kind of surprised by the amount of games that were announced yesterday. Yeah. Now, not all of them are going to be launch titles. So, I mean, I don't right. expect 25 games to come out within three months of the console being released. Mm-hmm. But normally, like, when a console announcement like this is made, they announce, like, two or three release date games. And then they're like, oh, yeah, all the sports games. <laughs> and like, you know, and you can kind of see, like, some of the games from this generation of consoles will probably also get ported to the next generation. Sure. You know, um, but they'll be available on both. And for this one, Sony came out and they were like, they kicked in the door and were like, all right, gut check. You know, <laughs> so, um, yeah. You know, you said it earlier. Some of these games have release dates of 2021. So some of them are going to be like January, 2021. Some of them just said 2021. So it could be any time of the year. Right. Um, some of them, I think that pragmatic, pragmatic game you're talking about said 2022. So mm-hmm. yeah, mean, there was, there was a couple titles in the list that had 2022 dates. Uh, like I said earlier, I wouldn't be surprised if horizon forbidden West was also a 2022 game, but right. Um, but I mean, it's, at the same time that's good because it it creates immediate hype so it's like oh man this comes out in like three months or five months dope whereas for something like that it's like oh man i have this to look forward to in a year or a year and a half so uh, i thought it was great i I was excited like i said i'm not a gamer by any stretch of the imagination we're uh, at least in the sense that people normally use that word so Mm -hmm. i know if i was stoked for it i'm sure a lot of people that are way more into it were way more stoked than i am yeah yeah and also have like far more sophisticated opinions yes um okay so i did think of one fucking beef that i have with this it did not have a reveal trailer or gameplay for one game that i have been waiting for for so fucking long since like the ps3 and that's dead island 2 where where's my dead island 2 bro like dead island 2 already came out no, uh, there there was Dead Island one and then Dead Island Riptide. Like, oh, I, I assume is that, that Dead Island two. Right, yeah, that that's kind of like that was like a DLC almost, but in physical format. Like, I mean, I I think you can get it digitally now, obviously, but it was it was almost like an extension. Like, it took you almost just as long to play through it as Dead Island one. Um, I actually liked it. I, I liked Riptide better than Dead Island One because they introduced the new uh, character who was used to be a kickboxer before the uh, the apocalypse. So like when you kick the zombies, if you kick them against rocks, like their body parts would blow off. It was the fucking greatest thing of all time. And and yeah, like they announced 
um they they had a a trailer for dead island 2 it actually popped up on my facebook news feed like from from 2014 i think 2014 2015 and and i've been waiting ever so patiently ever since then and yeah buddy i would go ahead and just take my give up on it yeah (laughs) man yeah i i don't know i i I feel like don't I don't know I, what you got till it's <laughs> gone. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, nah, I'm still going to hold out hope. Like, hell, they remade Road Rash. Like, they brought that shit back. Yeah, so, man. Fucking fl- blast from the past. I know. Um, I mean, I'm not going to. I mean, if there's a company out there that thinks they can make money off of it, the game will come out. Yeah. It took them forever to make Duke Nukem forever. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh yeah. and it was bad. It was in fact terrible. But uh <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, there's there's several uh you know game developers out there that that do that where you know they it takes just forever to come out uh with with a sequel or a remake or whatever is kind of like highly anticipated. Um but it, I think it's it's kind of like what you hear about Cameron and why he takes so long to make movies is because he has to like literally invent the software that's going to create the movie like with avatar. Um, I mean, fuck like that movie came out in what 2013. (laughs) We still haven't gotten a sequel for it yet. No, that movie came out in like 2009, dude. Was it really that fucking long ago? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Are you sure? Are you sure? Google it. Okay. Okay. I, I believe you. Jeez. yeah like yeah 2009 chief <laughs> yeah okay well fuck me running yeah that was a long time ago and we're still waiting um mm-hmm. supposedly yeah, i don't know why i got on the subject of avatar i apologize but like supposedly their uh, avatar two three and four i think or maybe just two and three are supposed to come out like uh in consecutive years so like I think next year we're supposed to get the sequel and then the year after that we get the next one. Yeah, they're supposedly all filming together. The, yeah, at the same time. Um yeah. I, I I I I did not like Avatar. I did not either. No. Maybe I, if I saw it in IMAX I would have felt differently, but no, I don't think so. The movie was not good. And I like James Cameron a lot. Right. I have a lot of respect for James Cameron because basically as a director he's just like uh playing the big dick game. <laughs> truth yeah Where he's just like i want to make the movie titanic and to do that we're going to actually go to the titanic <laughs> and the movie uh, studio was like what, <laughs> uh, what else money. what else you got yeah um it's kind of like where i saw um I, I want this to be true i don't know if this was like a, a an onion style headline or not but I saw something where it was like Tom Cruise is trying to partner with Elon Musk to film the next Mission Impossible movie. In oh space. my god! And I was like, Please I want that to be happen. true more than I've ever wanted anything else <laughs> in history to be true. <laughs> Dude, that would be fucking epic. Um, yeah, I, I did see like I was reading a list of movies that uh, have gotten delayed because of you know the the COVID stuff and studios having to push pause on production and mission impossible uh i i guess it's it'll be seven and eight um where i I think they were supposed to do the same thing come out uh one after each other separated by 12 months and the release dates got pushed back for for that i think maybe six months to a year um so you know bummer if you enjoy the mission impossible movies like i do um I will just like James Bond. I will continue to go see them until they stop making them, um, regardless of if they're bad or not. <laughs> so, I don't know how we got on the topic of movies. It's probably my fucking fault. But well, it's because movies uh, make life better. Ha <laughs> 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 That's that's what you call a callback, I guess. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have much else to say. I, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said that other people probably have said it already and in a better mm-hmm. fashion. So, sure. um, sometimes it'd be like that. Yeah. Sometimes you'd be a, uh, a simpleton, dumb, dumb idiot brain, uh, a garbage bastard man, if you will, if that's a callback too. Uh, but you know, if, uh, if you've hung on this far, Hey, congratulations. And I'm sorry. Uh, but you made it to the fish finish line. Um, 
And uh, yeah, it's it's nice to have you. Bet um, you regret that. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, there's a lot of light at the end of the tunnel because here we come with the wrap up. Uh, like always, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Like Ted said in the intro, we do have our new ish Facebook group. Um, look us up. Uh, it's like I said, I think it's the Geek Garage fans and listeners page group. Um, uh, like Ted said at the beginning, we have all kinds of polls and stuff. Um, also, you can find us on our website, geekgaragepodcast.com. Um, subscribe to the podcast uh, we're pretty much everywhere if there is a podcast app we're probably on it um so of course all the big ones apple google spotify youtube um i know that's not a podcasting platform but people requested that we be on it they were like hey are you on youtube and i was like uh podcast is audio but they're like yeah just put a still image and stick your audio on it so that's what we did and that's what's there <laughs> um but yeah, that's a, th- I think that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, Ted, like always, thank you for joining me, good sir. I appreciate you uh, being on and helping me out. Yes, thank you uh, for having me, apparently. <laughs> I don't know why I talk to you like a guest, but I feel like I have to say hi and bye to you one more time before the end of the podcast. So, um, but yeah, thank you as always. Um, and thank you listeners uh, if you made it this far and as always be kind stay geeky and eat lots of cheesecake bye later